Hello everyone, this is Teresa Benson, Product Marketing Manager here at Red Lion Controls, and we're continuing our series on Crimson 3.1. If you've been following along from the beginning and you are seeing this screen, uh, don't be concerned. We have not gotten to some of these concepts yet, but I just thought I'd show you where we're headed in some cases. Um, we're going to talk uh, in these episodes about our uh, pop-out menus, about how we can make pretty much anything have an action. We'll talk about the trend viewer, which is what we're seeing here. How we can do things like create bands and bugs on gauges. In fact, that that's where we're going to spend some time today and you can see how these get modified if I change that set point to uh, something other than 33 so let me try uh, 58% let's say we see that little green bug uh, zoom in a little bit here so you can see it we see that little green bug change um, that responds to you know whatever value I give that particular data tag and then the lights respond accordingly so let's spend some time today with gauges all right I'm going to open up the crimson 3.1 project we've been working with and let's go ahead and create a new page so we create new pages very similar to how we would create a new data tag we can simply click on this icon for new page I could also copy and paste the old page if I felt like it in this case I just want to start with a blank slate. The other thing we're going to do, uh, we're not going to navigate between pages until a future episode, is I am going to pull this one ahead of page one. So all I did is I clicked, grabbed, and dragged it ahead of page one. Let's go ahead and rename this. We rename things a few different ways. We can either right click and choose rename or hit F2 and rename. And let's call this the gauge page. Now you'll notice that with our data tags and pages, we don't include spaces so if you want a space in there just use an underscore uh, for me gauge page all one word is just fine okay today we're going to learn about our gauge primitive let's go to our data tags and let's bundle these all together uh, for a future project you saw that tank one and tank two so what I'm going to do is create a folder so I just clicked on the new folder you notice wherever I am when I click that button right below it is where the folder will be created it works for data tags as well wherever you are right below it is where those tags are created so let's name this one tank one and that way later when we start to build out some of the things we're going to do uh, we have all of these in the tank one folder so all I'm doing is clicking holding and dragging into the tank one see that black mark indicates where it will be if I put it down here it'll be the last thing and I'm just dragging these into that folder and there's my tank one this is for the web example tank one project. When we decide to do a tank 2, we can just copy and paste this folder and we already have data tags for pretty much everything for that second tank. All right, let's make a new one. I'm going to click on this folder and notice it created it inside the tank 1 folder. It always creates it wherever you are the next level down. So I'm going to just move it out of tank 1. Go ahead and collapse that and I'm going to call this gauge one all right and let's create some data tags in here the first thing is we need a value of some kind the next let's talk a little bit about bands and bugs I am going to leave uh, data tags out of it for the moment but we'll come back in here and do something with bands and bugs now let's use our handy get up down data um, function that we've been using all along to create a number that goes between zero and some upper limit. So I'm going to go to internal, general, get up, down data. I'm going to use the display count as my uh, counter that goes up constantly and I'll just give it 101. That means, remember, that it'll go between zero and 100. Let's also come over here and just also assign minimum and maximum values 
All right, so we've got a gauge uh, value that will cycle between 0 and 100. Let's come over to our gauge page and look on the resource pane for the gauges area. We have a variety of gauges available to us, and when you click on any of them, you notice there are a variety more things in there that we can do with it. For the purposes of this demo, especially when we talk about this last one here, I really want to make them pop without having to do a lot of extra maintenance this first time around with the colors. So let's change the background of our display page. To do that, we're going to click anywhere on the page, go to properties, and right in the middle, the fill color, let's change it to something other than black, maybe a, a nice light gray. I'm going to click OK, and now we can see that our HMI's background is going to be a light gray. Now I am going to go ahead and pick that A2 radial gauge to start exploring how our gauges work. And the first one is this nice chrome, so let's just click and drag it over. All right, when we're working with primitives or when you're working even with symbols, something to be aware of when you resize them. If you grab the handle and you don't hit the control key and you want something to be nice and square or nice and circular, you're going to end up with something a little bit warped. And, you know, that's pretty straightforward how handles and drawing work in a lot of applications. So what we can do is hit the control key on your keyboard. As soon as I do that, this pops into a nice one by one ratio. Okay, so let's make that gauge a particular size and go in and explore its properties. So far, we haven't assigned it a value, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, that gauge one, we can do two things here. I'm over in the resource pane and I click on data tags and here is that value. I can just drag it over or if you feel like typing gauge one dot value. All right, the min and max here are going to be value min, value, oops, max. I could also type in 0 and 100 because I know that to be true. We can also make this the result of a formula. We can make them other tags. Crimson is incredibly versatile in that way. Okay, so the next thing let's look at we can choose uh, the colors that the major and minor marks will be. So right now they're black. We can make them uh, change color. Remember we talked about two state. So let's make the majors change color depending on that value tag. So let's say that when gauge one dot value is less than 50, we want those majors to be, I'm going to pick a bright green so we can really see it. And when it's greater than or equal to 50, they'll turn red. Click OK. The minor colors, let's go ahead and leave those black for now. And we can see that already they've turned green because currently the value of value is zero. We haven't put in a simulated value. We haven't done anything else. Okay, the other nice thing about these gauges is they're incredibly versatile in terms of the number of divisions you have. Um, you can have uh, whatever you'd like. What, one thing I really like about these digital gauges is um, regardless of the application you have, you can really design these things to look like and respond like what your user is used to in the analog world. So let's say our uh, gauge has five major divisions and each division has 10 minor divisions, okay? We can change the pointer. We can make it a pointer or we can make it a sweep. The sweep will give us a bright red line sweeping around the gauge. We'll look at that in a second. And we can change this pointer as well to change color in any variety of ways depending on what's going on. And then we have a variety of different uh, styles here as well. So maybe I choose a small arrow. I think I like the pointed the best. Okay, let's see what this looks like 
on our HMI. I'm going to go ahead and send it down and we'll see it in a moment. And as soon as we hit that halfway point, we should see those majors turn. And they did, just like we expected. Okay, we can do other things. Let's go ahead and add the, the numerical value of value onto the face of this. So I'm going to go to data tags and drag a value over and notice that when we, I'm going to pop over to the other one, when we drag um, tags over onto a black background, the handle, uh, the area recognizes it and gives you a white character. It is smart enough to see that the background here is a lighter one and so it turns it black for us. So that's the first way that we can put a data tag on here. The other way we can, I'm going to go ahead and delete this, is come into primitives, go to core primitives, and this center one is a data box. Now in this case it probably makes more sense for us to just drag that data tag over, but I want to show you how the data box works. So right now the data box has no information in it. It is a blank slate for us to put in whatever we'd like. This might be a calculated formula that only appears in the HMI and we don't need it anywhere else. Or in this particular case, I want it to be value. So as soon as I've done that, now it's assigned that value. I automatically get just the data value. I don't get the label and data like we do when we drag it over. And let's go ahead and use a format that's in here, numeric only. I'm going to pick 24 and see how that looks. Okay, we get our red lines, which means that the size of the font is too big for the size that we've allotted. I'm going to drag it over and I want to make sure that this is centered on the center of my gauge. So I'm going to right click align with, oops, align with center of and choose my gauge. It shifted it over a little bit. I think I like it down just a hair more. Let's go ahead and send that. And there we go. So now we're seeing the actual value of whatever's going on here. That's how we work with gauges. In our next episode, we'll explore this concept further.